After we left Paracas, we head down the coast with Brian Forrester to Palpa, Peru. We were on our way to Nazca. We went to Palpa, Peru and took a look at the petroglyphs there. Hey everyone, so we're here in Palpa, uh, Peru. And that mountain right there is the beginning of the geoglyphs. There's hundreds of them going back um, quite some distance. These were made by the Paracas culture. Almost everybody has heard of Nazca and the Nazca lines, but what most people don't know is that the Nazca lines and figures go from Paracas, which is more than 100 miles away to the northwest, through this area called Palpa, and then into Nazca. So there are like 30 large, famous Nazca geoglyphs that people will have heard of, and some of the runways. People will have heard of the spider, the monkey, etc. But on the tops of these mesas, and also on the side of this mountain, there are more than a thousand smaller figures. But these are anthropomorphic. It's almost like they're part human and part insect or something. So that shows us the mentality of the Paracas people uh, was much more artistic and mysterious than the Nazca. But the Paracas are this mysterious culture with elongated heads who made these, all of these strange figures like this. And the question is, like, why did they create these and what did they represent? The petroglyphs in Palpa are distinctly different than the ones in Nazca. The ones in Nazca were made by the Nazca people. The ones in Palpa were actually made by the Paracas people. They both existed at different times, however, they coexisted for a certain period of time. But these elongated skull people that were another species that coexisted as a humanoid on the planet with us at a certain time in history. Who were these people and why were they drawing petroglyphs on the top of mountainsides? So in Nazca, a lot of these lines are actually on the ground, so you can see them from the ground. But in Palpa, many of them are on top of hills, on top of mountains. So not only did they have to get up there, but they weren't even attempting to let it be seen from the ground. They were just specifically for whoever was above them. When we were in Nazca, we went into a plane and we flew over the Nazca lines. The Nazca lines have become world famous of the petroglyphs, of the monkey, of the spider. The Nazca lines are very much of regular common items or animals that we actually know of that exist. You have these two deposits. You have the seabed, which is this white material. And then you have the volcanic activity, which is granite, so it's darker. And so all the Nazca had to do was scrape away the darker material and expose the clay, and that's what makes the Nazca line. Very simple. Stay tuned, we're gonna upload more videos on our YouTube channel and take a look at the different things that we found here. Um, the whole of Peru is an archeological mecca. Um, everywhere is so much so that um, even in people's backyards there's elongated skulls and different types of remains and um, the ruins and pyramids. There's just so much going on over here and the time really is now to unveil the truth about Peru and um, you know, it's ancient history.